Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over how to find the median of a data set. That's right, we're dipping our toes into a little bit of statistics, but in order to talk about medians of data sets, we need to have some data. But where can we get some of that? Hmm, oh, look at that. What do you know? What are the odds we find a data set right here? These are some test scores listed in no particular order. So how can we find the median of this data? Well, the median of a data set is the value separating the lower half of data from the upper half of data. In order to find that, we need to list the data in order from least to greatest, and then find the middle value. So let's start writing this data out in order from least to greatest. Looking at it, I can see that 3 is the smallest value. I'll cross that out. Then the next smallest value is 71, so we'll cross that out and write that second. Then the next smallest value, that would be 78 right there, so we'll cross that out and write it here. And then the next smallest value, that would be 83 right here. So we'll cross that out, write that next, and then 84, so we can cross that out, write that here. Then the next one would have to be 85. Cross that out, write it here. After 85 would be 90. And we actually have two 90s, so we'll write both of them. We can cross those both out and then write those both in our ordered list. Next would have to be 92. Cross that out, write that here, and then we have two hundreds. Those are the two highest values. We can cross those out and write those here. So now we know we have ordered every value from this list of scores. We've ordered them from least to greatest. Fantastic. Now there's really two ways that we can find the middle value. First, I'll show you the way that I was taught how to do it. All you gotta do is cross off the smallest value, then cross off the largest value, then the next smallest value, then the next largest value, next smallest, next largest, next smallest, next largest, next smallest, next largest. Oh look, all of a sudden you're left with one number in the middle, so that is our median. This is the value that separates the lower half of data from the upper half of data. And by that, I mean there's the same number of data points in here, which would be 5, as there are in here. So 85 is the median of this data set, and that's how you find it. One other way we could have gone about finding that middle value, though. Let me show you this. We could count up the total number of values, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there are 11 total values. Then we add 1 to the total number of values giving us 12, then divide 12 by 2, giving 6, and then your median is just going to be the sixth value in the list. Then we just count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sixth value is 85, so the median is 85. Now the value of the median of a set of data is that it's not really skewed by outliers. So in this set of data, you can see that 3 is a bit of an outlier. It's really not at all close to all of the other values. But despite this outlier, you can see that the median is still right in the middle of all of the data. So the median is pretty impervious to outliers, which is one of the reasons it's valuable. For comparison's sake, here is the mean of the data set. We get the mean by adding up all the values and then dividing that by the total number of values, which in this case was 11. So we added them all up, divide them by 11, that gives us 79.6. And you can see here in our ordered list, 79.6 lies right about here, so that's really not in the middle of the data at all. So the mean has been skewed quite a bit by this outlier. But enough of that, let's do another example. And oh look, we've got another great set of data to work with. So these are the numbers of hot dogs eaten in a hot dog eating contest. And here's a nice picture of a hot dog. Again, to find the median, we're going to list these values in order from least to greatest. You can actually order them from greatest to least, too. That will work just fine. So just for the sake of demonstration, let's do that. We'll order them from greatest to least. So the greatest value, I quickly see, is 1,000. So we can cross that off and write that here. Some guy ate a 1,000 hot dogs in this contest. Then the next largest value after 1,000 is 31. That's right there, so we can cross that off write 31, then the next largest value, that would be 30. So cross off 30, write that here. I'm just crossing them off so I don't accidentally reuse any of these values. It also helps me know that I used every single one in my list. Then the next largest value is going to be 23. So cross that off, write it here, and then it would be 17, right here. Cross that off, we've got 17. The next largest value would be 11. I can quickly see it's going to be 10 after that, and then 9. So I'll write all three of those, cross them off, 11, 10, and 9. And then there's just two left, there's 6, and then 5. So cross those off, and plop them down here in our ordered list. All right, so let's use the same strategy that we used first with the previous data set. Cross off the largest number, then the smallest, then the next largest, then the next smallest, then the next largest, then the next smallest, then the next largest, then the next smallest. Oh no, what do we do now? We've got two numbers right in the middle instead of just one. 
Well, the reason we've got two numbers in the middle now instead of just one is that we have an even number of data points. In this case, we generally compute the median by taking the average of these two values that remain. So to do that, we just have 17 plus 11, and then we divide this by 2. So that's going to be equal to 28 divided by 2, and that's equal to 14. So our median is 14, because 14 is halfway between those two remaining values. So just be ready for that. If you've got an even number of data points, you're going to have two values in the middle. Then you just have to take the average of those by adding them up and dividing by two. And then that is your median, 14 in this case. Now let's get rid of all those marks and try the other strategy that we tried with the last set of data. So we just count up the number of data points. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's 10 data points, then we add 1 to that, giving us 11, then divide that by 2, giving us 5 and a half. Our median is going to be the 5 and a half data point. We see the fifth data point is 17, and the sixth data point is 11, but what is the 5 and a half data point? Well, by the 5 and a half data point, we just mean the value that is halfway between the 5th and the 6th data points, which again we can compute by taking the average of 17 and 11, which is going to be 14. 14 is halfway between 17 and 11. And so, of course, we get the same answer because they're both ways of computing the median. 14 is the median of this data set. And again, for comparison's sake, here is the mean of this data set, 114.2, which obviously doesn't represent the data set very well at all, because there's only a single data point that is above 100, so you can see the mean is totally ruined by this outlier of 1000, but our median, not ruined at all, our median is perfectly fine. So that's how you find the median of a data set and a little bit about the benefits of the median. I hope this video helped you understand this process. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You'll have it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes everything.